you know, it looked fast sitting still. The slope of the windshield, the flush door handles. Kind of the rounded curves, more modern looking, more sleek. In 1988, Chevrolet restyled their Chevy and GMC trucks and made them more car-like than they ever had before. They're dedicated to building America's best-built truck, the full-size Chevy truck, an American success story. Oh, cool thing about the late 80s, I mean, my God, it was the music scene, MTV, all that. People were just hungry for new ideas and they were willing to try anything. They wanted their truck to be cutting edge. This isn't this isn't your daddy's old farm truck or whatever. This is something that's brand new. The truck thing in the 80s, early 80s, really wasn't, at least with me, that big of a deal yet. I mean, we were doing the cow bugs, we were doing the minis. The square body ran from 73 to 87, and it was a very utilitarian looking truck. It was just a farm truck. Trucks are trucks. You're supposed to put manure and gravel in the back. 88 through 98 body was introduced. That was that was a game changer. It was like it was styled more like a car. You know, your eye goes from the back of the vehicle to the front. Nothing catches your eye. The look of the truck really lent itself to what we were trying to do. It was a slam dunk. You get the support of the whole aftermarket industry uh, to build products for these things. That's what really kind of made that that body style take off. Jim Ewing saw that. And, and had this vision in his head of, I could really make that truck look good. What's everybody doing? Taking the test drive of the decade in the advanced new Chevy. We kind of got our foot in the door with General Motors because they needed some spindles built for the Fiero Pace car for the Indy 500. And, and Jim, who was, who's always the marketing guy and, and, and always a forward thinker, uh, told General Motors, hey, we'll build spindles for that car if we can get an actual prototype vehicle of what is going to become your new GM platform pickup. Went to work in a Quonset hut downtown Fresno that was all of maybe a thousand square feet, but in the back was under a tarp what was going to become the brand new Chevrolet pickup. Superbell kind of rose to fame in, in the hot rodding world. They basically reversed Superbell axle and the original name of Belltech was actually Bell Supertech. Our whole product line on the Belltech side was maybe 12 or 13 part numbers. It grew within six months to probably over 50 part numbers. Like right away there was, you know, Belltech, they did the grills and they had the bumper mask and mirrors, lowering kit, roll pan. Back then we were leading edge, you know, the drop spindle, the nitro drop shocks. You know, it, it was fairly revolutionary. Nobody was really doing that back then. If, if you look at the bolt-on stuff that they had back then, the roll pans and the bumpers and the smaller mirrors, it was, it was complementing that truck that already was a good-looking truck. From there, that's what Beltec was known about, sport trucks. It started out as the older crowd. You know, it was the hot rod guy. It was the adults, it was the guys that drove 32, 33, 34 Fords on the weekends. And all those guys had street rods and muscle cars, but they also wanted to have a truck. You know, 10 guys buying the same short bed uh, Chevy, lowering them, and then, you know, putting custom graphics on them and putting different wheels, in, but they each had their own unique style to them, and they were all 10 different trucks. This is huge, is you could use it as a work vehicle during the week and drive it home Friday night, take your wheels off that you were driving, put on your custom ones, do a couple things in the bed, and you could go to all of a sudden a truck show on the weekend with a customized vehicle and be recognized. Those former mini truck owners are now driving the bigger trucks, but they're taking their same taste with them, you know, like with body slams. Even if all you did was lower and put a, put a nice set of wheels on it, you were in. The wheels and tires, the course of bolt on suspension, everything that you needed. The roll pan, the bumper mask, the billet grill, all that stuff worked on those trucks. You know, painting the mirrors, painting the door handles, a good set of wheels, and the right stance on these things. And 
most of them were out of that Southern California market, you know. That's where that all started to happen and all the players were at. Traders, truck accessories and Whittier, I mean, Tim was tried and true to his factory colors of red, but he built some amazingly high-tech and clean trucks. Our look was so, so sought after and, and everybody identified that platform of truck with our company. But yeah, sport truck meant that anybody that was standing on a street corner and a truck would go by, that was something like seeing a street rod go by or a customized car go by. And it turned out to be a great thing because then we had another publishing company, Peterson, decided Sport Truck was a great title to pick up and use. Um, it just seemed like one, one build after another, one cover after another every month were trucks that had our product on them. And all those trucks on the cover, that's what you wanted to see. You can't wait for Truck and Magazine to come or Sport Truck. Every truck we did, all we had to do was make a phone call and, and it was photographed. It was on the cover, it was on the centerfold. But the 88 Chevy GMC with that suspension was like the thing that really launched the market and trucking and everything else at the time. That's the day Chevy truck. Well, it was the 80s, it was the age of billet, so <laughs> billet wheels were, were all the rage. Every truck we built had Boyd's wheels on it, we were cranking them out. Boyd decided to do something that was major different from a lot of the other guys because uh, many trucks and other trucks, they look more like boats because of the huge graphics and whatever else. Boyd was just the opposite. Uh, Boyd did a monochromatic thing with the colors on the trucks. It would be known as, yeah, it was a truck with the Boyd look. Uh, my dad, Boyd Coddington, started the business back in the late 70s. Since I was a kid, my dad started building hot rods in the garage, um, and he always had trucks. Then my dad started to apply his Boyd look to these trucks. At Hot Rods by Boyd, we created a lot of unique cars. That's when I decided we needed a special wheel. That's when I started Boyd's Wheels. That build became a really big thing in the 80s and 90s. You know, CNC machining started to get popular. You know, once something's programmed, I mean, you can machine it a million times. It starts out with maybe five or six designs, and the next thing you know, by probably 91, we probably had 60 different billet designs. So once Boyd got involved too, uh, it, it, just, it just vamped up after that. I took my wife over to the dealership in Santa Fe Springs. That was Lynn Pugh's uh, GMC dealership and he had made a deal with Boyd where he was actually doing conversions on these vehicles, if you want to call it that, and he had them in a showroom over there. There's a brand new truck that was customized and sitting on a GM dealer's lot. That doesn't happen today, but the aftermarket embraced those trucks and they saw an opening there where they could make something really cool. But they were also doing a type of vehicle that you could buy and finance it. And there were trucks sitting in inside the uh, showrooms with our product on it from day one. Stein Concepts and Belltech and Trader's Truck Accessories really did a great job of marketing uh, the OBS trucks. They created this idea of the Southern California lifestyle. We were a marketing machine back then. Uh, the posters, the girls in the bikinis. We did a truck for Eddie Van Halen. We did a truck that was a duplicate of Eddie's truck that was a giveaway truck for Sport Truck. And, you know, we lived like rock stars. People knew who the Beltec boys were. Jim Morris was the front man of Beltec. I would get my marching orders from Jim Morris. He'd say, hey, I need you to drive over to Boyd's, go see Chip Foose. Chip Foose has a drawing of the new bumper cover we want to build. I'd pick up that drawing, take it down to Prototype Concepts and drop it off. When it comes to Morris, you can't pull the curtain back too far. <laughs> <laughs> That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. He was a customizer. He owned a louver shop. Um, and he was a guy that later was a, played a big part in, in what we did in the marketing of the company. Jim Morris. Right there, buddy. Well, Jim was a really personable guy. I say was. I mean, I hope that he still is. It's kind of what happened to Jim. He's been spotted here or there. <laughs> Last time I saw Jim. I uh, was in my hotel room at SEMA um, in about 99 or 2000 and he left real early in the morning and I've never seen him since. Tried to find him. I wish I knew Jim. If you're out there, man, call me, dude. <laughs> yeah, you know, some other stuff maybe we won't talk about, but, you know, there, there was also, uh, aside from the work, there was a lot of fun to be had, you know, during that time.
he was great. He was just always everywhere. And then when he got us hooked up with uh, uh, Michael Anthony from Van Halen and all that, that was really kind of cool. That was a good Jim Morris experience. He could talk you into something that you wouldn't realize what happened until after it was it was done. And he wore the cowboy hat, and I think he received a lot of flack for the cow for the cow truck. I'm not sure if people, everyone thought a cow truck or a Holstein concept was cool, but being from Central California, maybe it matched. I think the ones that seemed to be the most popular were uh, some of the splatter graphics, uh, which which were Tom Taylor style, if you will. For me, obviously. Uh the blue and pink Beltec poster truck, you know, I'm sure that's iconic for a lot of people. That Beltec truck just sticks in your mind just because it was such a wild truck. There's certain vehicles in any person's career that are, are almost like family, and, and that was one of them. Because that truck meant a lot to a lot of people. They had that poster on their wall. It was the first truck with computer cut graphics. So Mark thought, you know, why don't we do a, a, a tribute to, to basically the, uh, the CK that started it all? And I thought, man, we should redo that 90 SEMA truck. We wanted to stay true to the original truck and make sure that it looked correct.